Hello folks, Scott with Dallas Paint Correction and Auto Detailing here in Dallas, Texas. We're going to play with a compound that I haven't used in a very long time and my mind is so... I don't know where it is, it's on another planet. I don't remember a lot about this product, but it's the Griot's Garage Complete Compound. They're boss systems, I use them daily, I love them. I was never really... How do I say this without sounding obnoxious or rude? Griot's compounds and polishes before their boss system really weren't anything that I was going for in my professional career and doing paint correction for my customers. They just, they just weren't. There were other compounds and polishes that I, would, that I was using. But what I have here is I've got this compound. If we look at this compound here, Griot's makes some claims on it. It says it removes, doesn't hide blemishes, so there's no silicones in it, no fillers. What we see is what we're going to get. They also say it wipes off in one easy pass. I don't remember. We'll see what happens. It says that you can use this with their foam correcting pad, which would be their orange correcting pad. I think I showed this to you guys the other day in another video. This is their correcting pad, their orange pad. You can use it if, with this if you want. I'm actually going to use it with something else, and they talk about it, the, mi the microfiber fast pad. And that's what I have attached to this 6-inch Griot's orbital polisher. I've got the fast finishing pad. According to the box, when you get this thing or you do some research about it, it says it goes after moderate or severe defects depending on what type of compound you're going to use with this. I don't really see the complete compound as the most aggressive compound on the market. Actually, I'll just make a statement. It's not. But I'll show you what we're working with here. Let me show you this panel. I've got some defects on it. It's not horrific. It's not horrible, but we'll bring you in. Hopefully, we can catch it with the light. Let's see if we can see it. Well, if we look on that to the right and left of that light bar, we'll see those little scratches on the panel. I'll move over here. They kind of dissipate and disappear. They're not uniformed across the panel. We got some more scratches on there. Sorry, the lighting's not the best. But okay, there's scratches there to the left and the right of the of the light bar. You can see them. I don't know what I would equate that to. I would say maybe that's like using 2,500 grit sandpaper. Who knows? But I'm gonna see if I can get those out with that pad and with the horse. Sorry, guys. I'm just gonna move you real quickly here. I'm going to see if I can get those defects out using the Griot's polisher with their fast pad. Now, many of you guys who follow me on my channel, I've made videos about priming the pad. Do I prime the pad? Technically, typically, I don't prime foam pads. But this is where I kind of change my opinion. When you're working with microfiber pads, in my opinion, from my perspective, I do think it's good to prime the pad. So I've already done that to kind of get this video to move a little quicker. I basically make sure that every bit of the fibers has got some type of that complete compound on it and then I kind of mat it down within the microfiber. Typically, in my opinion, again, it's just my opinion, but after you, when you have initially primed a microfiber pad, in my opinion, there's enough compound on that pad to do a two by two area when you first start off and then when you move on to your next area you can just apply a little bit more product but I'll I've primed the pad I'm just gonna put a little bit more product on here so I've got I guess some guys call it their working product I'll do it but I won't put a lot on there I'll just put a little bit let me put a little bit on there I'll put three little dots on it that's about it that's all I'm gonna put on there because the pad is already primed okay I'm gonna damp this thing out now I have used Griot's microfiber pads before. I've used this one before. This one's a little bit thicker than like Meguiar's. Kind of nice when you're working on contours and you want that microfiber pad to kind of roll across some contours. It's nice when it's thick like this. In my professional opinion, when I'm really trying to go after deep defects, I like the Meguiar's cutting pads. They're a little, well, they're quite thinner than this. That also translate that more power from the polisher can get to the face of the pad. Yes, the Meguiar's, because they're thinner, they're not so forgiving on contours. That's kind of an added bonus with this. But I think Meguiar's cutting pads just work better for me, get me deeper defect removal. You guys have to decide whether or not that works in your world, but I just wanted to bring up that point. Okay, so I'm going to go in here and I'm going to spread the product out. I'll spread it out on speed two and a half or whatever, and then I'll 
speed the machine up to five and a half, somewhere around there, moderate pressure, slow arm speeds. Maybe I'll do four section passes and let's see what happens.
think a lot of things are coming back to me when I've used this compound, uh, this compound in the years past. And also that microfiber pad. Again, that microfiber pad is not my microfi microfi microfiber pad of choice. But let's see with griots, is this an easy wipe off? I will typically say when you prime a microfiber towel, you're going to have a lot of product on there. This probably won't come off in one wipe. But let's see what happens. Now, I'm going to have to go over it a couple times. I'm going to have to apply some pressure to be able to remove this compound. But again, it's because I did apply a lot when I was um, priming the pad. I'm also going to give you my opinions about that pad in a minute because certain things are coming back to me when I used it. Okay, so what did I do? Four section passes maybe, real low, small, real slow arm speeds, moderate pressure, had that back plate spinning in the sweet spot. You notice towards the end I picked up my arm speed. I do that to kind of restore shining gloss. It's a little bit of a trick. You guys will learn that as you go on or maybe you guys know it already. That's kind of cool. But anyway, let's see what that pad and compound did for the surface of this paint. So if I come in here, let's see that light bar. Not, not bad. It, it, it did a pretty nice job, even just doing maybe three or four passes with moderate pressure. Maybe some of you guys would do six section passes, eight section passes. I will tell you something, when you get into paint correction on a professional level, and you're working for people who own daily drivers, you're going to want to find stuff that doesn't require you to do six or eight section passes. It's just my opinion, take it or leave it. We want to be profitable, we want to meet our customers' expectations, but sometimes the way... I'm going to shut up right there and leave it alone. But there you go, if we look at that light bar, a lot of those defects were removed from the first time that we looked at it. I think it did well. I think it did a pretty good job. Oh, there's some defects down there that didn't get out. I don't know if I came all the way down this low. I think I did. But what do I think of this compound? Well, what I remember from years ago, and it's kind of coming back to me, it's a great compound if you want to do a one-step, a true one-step, and you're not working in direct sunlight, you're not working on a hot panel, because this stuff can get finicky on you with a hot panel and working in direct sunlight. I would not recommend using it that way. Again, I'm mobile. Sometimes I have no choice. This stuff will go after light to moderate defects. It will also restore a lot of nice shining gloss. So I remember it as a good one step where you didn't have to follow up with a polish and you can get some nice defects off the paint. The other thing I will say about this product, which is really nice, there is no dusting on the panel. I virtually see no dusting at all, maybe a little bit. Really a nice low dusting compound. If you're a beginner and you don't want to use really aggressive compounds, you're not offering your customers true 80%, 90% defect removal, you're just tiptoeing into paint correction, it's a nice compound. You can use it with a foam pad, but again, use it out of direct sunlight. I wouldn't use it on a hot panel. It starts to get finicky. But there's nice shining gloss to that panel now. Did we get some of those defects? Yes. Did we get them all? No. Maybe if I went eight section passes, maybe I could have done a little bit better. But in the real world of being profitable, trying to do paint correction for most people, 70 to 80 percent of the buying public, Folks, it's just my opinion. If you're in business for yourself, find a compound that's going to let you get to those defects within three to four, maybe five section passes. If you're using a compound that's always making you do six or eight section passes, unless you're going for that level of defect removal, you've made that agreement, you're getting paid for it, then fine. But I would find a compound that would do it a little bit quicker for me. Just my opinion. I love you all. That's my opinion about it. I do like the... I mean, I like the Griot's polisher, right? I will say this about Griot's, this microfiber pad. When you attach it to the backing plate, make sure you get that as centered as you can. It's a little difficult with the Griot's pad because it's a little bigger than the actual backing plate, right? So you got to make sure you get a little centered. If you notice when I was using it, it wanted to walk on me. And microfibers will do that. This, I, I tend to find that if I don't get that pad just right with Griot's, it'll walk drastically more than like McGuire's cutting discs. But uh, that's just my, I'm just being transparent, letting you know about it. But overall, I like it, it's great. Prime the pad when you use a microfiber, that's probably the only time I would do it. 
I don't typically prime foam pads, but there you go. There's my opinion about it. I think it's a decent. I give it a thumbs up. It's appropriate for the moment, depending on your customer's expectations and what you are trying to remove to the paint. You will definitely get nice shining gloss, very little dusting to almost no dusting at all. But do I think it's the best deep defect removal, even matching it with a microfiber? No. It's just my opinion. And it's not the easiest thing to wipe off. I wish it was a one wipe off deal. It's not. But then again, I had a lot on the pad because I primed it the first time. Maybe the next go around would be easier. I love you all. Hopefully that helps you out. Until next time, love one another. We'll see you on the next video.